Right, OK, uh, we're having a look at this predicted paper for Monday, um, the 8th of June. All right, it's done by Math Genie, free site, brilliant. Bloke who does it, no idea who he is. Um, he's a genius, though, so there you go. Right, we're going to move on. Here we go, question one. Now, work out the reciprocal of 1.25. Now, reciprocal literally means turn a fraction upside down, so we've got to convert 1.25 into a fraction. Now, hopefully you know that that's 5 over 4, so I'm going to turn that upside down. 4 fifths, that could be your answer, because they gave it as a decimal. I am also going to give it as a decimal. Again, you should know that. All right, bit of a nasty one to put question 1. All right, for those of you who are C and maybe bottom of B grade targets. Now, next one. This is just, can you use your calculator? And so I do 9.6. This is what you type into the calculator. You must put the bit in brackets on the bottom, the denominator. Okay, because otherwise it will only divide by the root 5 and not the minus 1.7. So you must put this bit in brackets. Right, stick that in your calculator and you get 17.91. It says to do it to two decimal places. Question 2. Now it says Becky counts the number of matches in 50 boxes, so we know this adds up to 50. Work out the mean number of matches. Okay, well we've got three boxes that have 45, that's this one, so therefore I'm doing 45 times 3, I'm doing 46 times 7, so I'm multiplying the number of matches by the frequency, so matches times frequency. And I'm going to write all those down. 1, 3, 5, 3, 2, 2, uh, what's that, 5, 6, 4, 1, 1. I'm not doing these in my head, people. I'm not quite that talented. I'm getting there, but I'm not quite that talented. All right, I'm 50. Now, I need the total. And the mean is add up the total and divide by how many you've got. So I'm going to find the total number of matches, which is 2, 3, 7, 1. All right, I already know that I've got 50 boxes. In order to finish off... I then do total number of matches, 2, 3, 7, 1, and I divide that by how many boxes they've got to go into, and I get 47.42. All right, it doesn't say what's rounded to, so I've done it to two decimal places, do it to one, I'm sure that. Right, now I'm going to make this a bit smaller so it fits on the screen. There, good. So, Describe fully the single transformation. That's pretty important. It's a single transformation. Now, it's got bigger, so therefore, first thing, enlargement. All right, one mark. We need three bits of information because it's three marks. How much bigger has it got? Well, this is three, so this is three, six, nine, so therefore that's three times bigger, scale factor three. And the last bit of information we need, I'm just going to rub out those lines that I drew just for the scale factor. And the last thing I need is a center. So the center I do, I get my ruler and I'm going to join up equivalent points. So if I, and you'll be able to do this much better, if I joined up those two points and those two points, all right, and drew them back, I would end up with the center. They would meet at the center. Well, it's not too bad, actually. I'm pretty pleased with that. Okay, here we go. And, oops, well, ish. I know, because I did it accurately earlier, that um, it meets at naught, naught. So there's my three bits of information. Enlargement, scale factor three, center, naught, naught. Either way. So... Next question. All oh, right, this is a value for money one, and it's got a star. All right, so that means we've got to explain what we're doing at every stage. I'm just going to make it a touch smaller so it will fit on the screen. So I like to do this by working out how much stuff, bags in this case, tea bags, I get for 1p. So for the small, I'm going to do 50 bags divided by 215. So how many bags per penny? I get and I, that gives me two, 0.232558. You're now wondering why I'm writing so many decimal places. Well, I'm writing so many decimal places because actually, what they do, they're a bit sneaky, they make uh, some of them really close. So, the more you do, the better. So, the medium is going to be 80 divided by 329, and I get 0.2. 
6.24 do you see actually these are pretty close it means you can't guess basically I'm going to do the same with this one 1, 2, 5, divided by 517 now I get 0 0.2 oh hang on look at that you see that's why I do a bit more 1779 now I look at which one I get the most tea bag for um, uh, for my money for per penny and that's the medium so medium oops medium is best value okay so there you go because it's a star star question right there's the star next to the four I need to put in an explanation so four marks okay four marks there you get one two three four there you go pretty straightforward isn't it Right, okay, question five. Oh, we got an exchange rate problem, isn't that nice? Now, Joan looking for a bargain. All right, in France, the camera he wants costs uh, 126 euros, um, and one euro is one, is 89p. So in France, in pounds, the camera costs one, two, six. Oops, not divide, what am I doing? Times. Uh, 0.89 so for every euro is worth 89p so I get in pounds 112.14 in America so in the US okay it's the 165.24 uh, uh, cents All right this time I've got because one pound equals one dollar sixty two I have to divide by 162 I get 102 of pound sign there. Okay, and then all I've got to do is find a difference, which is £10.14. Okay, once again, uh, if we look at how many marks, we've got four marks, so I need to give, do four things, basically. So there's one thing, second thing, take away third thing, answer fourth thing. Good. Question six. Right, get your compass out, because... Here we go, then we've got our standard locust question. They come up every year, don't they? So I imagine you were waiting for this one. So it says, uh, scale of a map, one centimetre equals five kilometres, and then it's going to be less than 10 kilometres from A and less than 20 from B. So how many fives in 10A? So open your compass, two centimetres, draw a circle. All right. All right. I can't obviously... It might damage my iPad screen if I'm totally honest, so I can't actually use a compass. All right, I'm sure there's a tool somewhere I could be using, but let's be honest, um, you get the drift. And then how many fives in 20? Well, that's four, so I open my compass four centimetres, and then I colour in the bit in the middle because that's where okay, my uh, warehouse can go, anywhere in there. So three marks, one for each circle, one for colouring in the right bits. Right now, number seven. Here we go. Now, there's always this is the standard one of these as well. All right, we've got this here. We're told that it's between two and three. Now, some of you may have been taught how to use your calculator's table function, where it will do the answer for you. But either way, you're going to have to draw a table to prove to the examiner that you know what you're doing. So big stroke small there and here we go so I chucked in two initially uh, when I put that into this it's two cubed plus 27 times two I got 62 and that's too small I then did 2.5 again 2.5 cubed plus 27 times 2.5 I get 83.125 again small I did 2.6 and then I did 2.7 as well. So we get this, 776, and we get 92. Now, this is where we've got to make a decision to make because the actual answer is between 2.6 and 2.7, but we only want it to one decimal place. So the one decimal place, all right, is one of these, okay? Now, which of these is close to 90? Well, actually, it's the first one, 2.6. I've got to turn it back on a pen. There we go, 2.6. Right, is slightly closer. This one here is slightly closer than this one here. So, 
the common mistake here is that people go 2.65, blah de blah de blah de blah. You don't need to. One decimal place. All right. Answer the question. Right now, question eight. Here we go. Oh, we like these ones. You have to. There's basically one way they're expecting to see on these. We have to draw a table. So we've got um, boys and girls. All right, so boys and girls, there we go. So boys and girls, and we're going to do total. All right, the total is a bit often people forget. And they're going to play football, hockey, or tennis. So football, hockey, tennis, again, total. All right, now then, there we go. Not the neatest, but there you go. We'll get the job done. Right, so now we're going to stick all the information we have into this. So there's 120 students in total. 30 of them were boys. Now, I know you could immediately put 90 girls. I'm not going to do that yet. I will do that in a minute. Now then, it says 12 of the boys and 26 of the girls play hockey. 12 boys, 26 girls play hockey. 45 students play football. And 35, I think, like, yeah, there it is, 35. And I'm reading all this from here. All right, so 35 of the 45 students play football, 12 and 26 there. So that, that's where all this has come from. Now, from that, I should be able to start filling in some blanks. So that becomes 38. All right, this becomes 37. All right, because 45, 38, and 37 has got to make uh, 120. Uh, this has got to make 90. And now I want number of girls who play tennis. Girls who play tennis. Right, now I sh I'm in a position to work that out. So 90 minus 35 minus 26 gives me 29. All right, I don't need to work out the rest. I, mean, I could if I really want, but I don't need to. And I just stick the answer 29 down there. Okay. Final question for this, because I've got to break out into three. I did the whole thing, and it was too long for YouTube. They got all stroppy with me. So therefore, here we go. So I need to make that smaller. There we go. Otherwise, it won't fit on the screen. Good. So here we go. Diagram shows a prism, cross-section of the prism, an isosceles triangle. Length of the size of 13, 13, 10. Perpendicular height is 12. Bit surprised I haven't asked you to work that out since it's a Pythagorean triple, but there you go. The length of the prism is 8. Find the surface area. Now, a lot of you may have automatically gone on to find the volume. Uh, don't do that, basically, because you asked to find the surface area. Read the question. So, the two triangles... 2 times, we know, a half base times height for the triangles. Now, the base is 10, and the height is 12. We're told that here. Okay, so we'll work that out. Uh, we've got the base. The base is 10 times 8. And we've got the two sides, all right, which are 13 times 8. I'm going to calculate all of those and then add them up. All right, add, add. And I get 408. All right, good. That's the first section done. The first nine questions of 26 done.